welcome again to our channel shifting grades <clears throat> i'd like first of all to make a kind request immediately you enter into the channel just below the headlines on your right hand you will see the word subscribe in bold red kindly just tap that button and you'll be subscribed to our channel and with that whenever we do a lesson you'll be getting automatic updates and that will be good for you therefore now i would like us to begin the today's topic the topic is a continuation we are doing pressure but we are now in the subtopic atmospheric pressure already we are familiar with the word atmosphere and we know what pressure is so far therefore <clears throat> atmosphere is simply the space which is above the earth's surface and it is important to note that the atmosphere is not a vacuum the atmosphere has air outside the earth's surface we have a volume of air and therefore because we know very well from the properties of matter that air has weight then because the air is on the earth's surface we can conclude that it is acting on the earth's surface and due to its weight it is causing some pressure therefore we can say that because if we call this one the earth surface then we have the air column this one is the air column we've called it the, the atmosphere actually therefore the air column above the earth surface because it has some weight it is causing a pressure on the earth surface and now that pressure due to the air column above the earth surface is what we are calling atmospheric pressure therefore we can note that atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure is the pressure is the pressure exerted is the pressure exerted on the earth's surface on the earth's surface due to the air column above it due to the air column above it therefore the air column above the earth's surface exerts some weight on the surface of the earth and that weight is the one which is causing a pressure and then the pressure due to the atmosphere is what we are calling atmospheric pressure it is good to note it is good to note that atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure is is greatest or is greater in lowlands than in islands this is simply what we are meaning if this is the earth surface you find the ground is not flat we have parts which are higher than other parts and therefore if this is the atmosphere now if this is the atmosphere you find the air column above a island is shorter when you compare with the air column above a lowland therefore in lowlands you have you have a very large air column compared to the air column on a highland and we know that air is a fluid and we say pressure formulae is given by h rho g therefore because we have a large height in the lowlands a height of air which is very large then we can say that in the lowlands because of the high column or the long column of air then atmospheric pressure which will act here will be greater than the pressure which is going to act in islands therefore we conclude that pressure 
in Lorentz is greater than the atmospheric ferric pressure in uh, in islands. <coughs> With that now, I would like to say that even though later we will be looking at <coughs> the measurement of pressure, I would like us to say that the atmospheric pressure atmospheric pressure is approximately is approximately 100,000 pascal is approximately 100,000 pascal we will be seeing how it can be measured therefore it is good to know that sometimes we have these instances which can make us confirm that really atmospheric pressure is in existence. When we have a bottle which is filled with hot water, which is having boiling water, then this bottle, you cook it. You cool it, you, you cook it, then you cool immediately. When it is cooked or closed, then cooled, you discover that the bottle shrinks. The bottle shrinks. This is because the, the observation will be like this. Huh? You discover that your bottle is not again in its original shape. It is it shrinks, in other words, inwards. Meaning, it's like there is a force acting from the external environment towards the bottle. And the force is acting because initially it was open, and when it is open, now atmospheric pressure is acting both inside the bottle and outside. But once it is cooked and cooled, it means that the vapor which was here, first of all, the vapor condenses to water and it falls back in the bottle and you find that it leaves a vacuum here. Now, when the vacuum is left now, it means now pressure goes down inside the bottle and the atmospheric pressure which is outside now is the one which pushes the bottle from both sides and you find by such doing, the bottle is found to have shrunk. And therefore we say that really there is an external force acting towards the bottle and that external force or that external influence is what we are calling atmospheric pressure. I would like us to see an example on this. An example on atmospheric pressure and I am going to read it. We are told example. I read it. A sea diver, a sea diver is 35 meters below the surface of seawater. Below the surface of seawater. Then we are told if the density of the seawater, if the density of the sea water is the density of the sea water is given as 1.03 grams per cubic centimeters and g is equals to 10 newtons per kilogram determine the total pressure on him determine the total pressure on him. Determine the total pressure on him. So I'd like us now to solve that simple question together. We are being told that <coughs> a sea diver is 35 meters below the surface of water. Then the density of the sea water where he is inside is 1.03 grams per cubic 
centimeter and the g which is the gravitational acceleration has been given as 10 newtons for every kilogram determine the total pressure on him solution it is good we realize that apart from the person being inside the sea this is water apart from the person being inside the water there is also an air column acting on him therefore the total pressure acting on this person is pressure due to the water column which has covered him and again pressure due to the atmosphere and therefore we can say solution that total pressure is equals to pressure due to the atmosphere plus pressure due to water and therefore we say that atmospheric pressure is a constant and can be approximated to 100,000 pascal or newtons per meter squared then pressure due to water now pressure due to water because water is a liquid will be given by the height of the water column times the density of water times gravitational acceleration this will give us 100,000 plus the height of the water column above that person is 30 5 meters times the density of water which is the sea water is 1.03 we multiply by a thousand to make this density to SI units then multiplied by 10 which is G therefore this will be 100,000 plus when we take 35 and we multiply with 1.03 then times 10,000 we get 360 500 therefore now you find the total pressure will be when we add now these two pressures pressure due to the atmosphere and the pressure due to the water column above this diver therefore the total pressure acting on this person who is inside water is the atmospheric pressure plus the pressure due to the water column and this will give us a total of 460,500 pascal one pascal is equal to one newton per meter squared so instead of a pascal we can say newton per meter squared so that is the total pressure acting on a sea diver let me give another example then we continue another example then we continue it is says this the air pressure the air pressure another example I'm writing it on the board example 2 the air pressure at the base of a mountain at the base of a mountain is 75 centimeters of mercury and at the top of the same mountain the pressure is 60 centimeters of mercury 6 centimeters of mercury given that the average density of air given that the average density of air is 1.25 kilograms per meter cubed and density of mercury and the density of mercury is 13,600 
kilograms per meter cubed. Calculate the height of the mountain. 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 Therefore, I would like us now to go through this question step by step. <clears throat> we have a mountain here. If we assume this is the mountain, then we are given pressure at the top as 60 centimeters of mercury. Then at the bottom as 75 centimeters of mercury. It is good to realize that uh, Again, as we had noted, that pressure at the bottom of the mountain will be greater than the pressure at the top. Therefore, we are told now, using these pressures, pressure at the bottom, pressure at the top of a mountain, we use to calculate the height of this mountain. The vertical height of this mountain is what you calculate. Therefore, <clears throat> it is good to know that because we are given the density of air, it is good to know that the pressure difference acting between the bottom of the mountain and the top of the mountain is due to the air column. And therefore, we can first of all say this, huh? that, let me get enough space. If we say this, huh? that, <coughs> the pressure at the base of this mountain supports so pressure at the bottom supports 75 centimeters of mercury we can convert this pressure to si units and we say this eh, that the column of mercury which can be supported at the mountain at, at the bottom of the mountain is 75 therefore the pressure here is 75 centimeters and because these are centimeters we divide by 100 to make them SI units times the density of mercury which is 13600 times G which is 10 therefore pressure <coughs> at the bottom of the mountain will be 75 times 136 these two zeros can cancel like that times 10 this will be 102 thousand newtons per meter squared or pascal we can again get the pressure at the top of the mountain if 60 <coughs> centimeters of mercury can be supported at the top of the mountain then it means the pressure there is the height of mercury which can be supported divided by 100 to make it meters times the density of mercury 13600 times 10 which is g therefore here we'll be having 60 by 136 by 10 and this gives us a pressure of 81600 newtons per meter square therefore now we have pressure at the top of the mountain and pressure at the bottom of the mountain in SI units already. Therefore, with this now, we can now say that pressure difference, we can now say the following. After that, we can say pressure difference. The pressure difference in the, between the top and the bottom of the mountain is equal to pressure due to the air column pressure due to the air therefore that pressure difference between the top and the bottom of the mountain is due to the air column which is here therefore we can now get the pressure difference and we equate it to the pressure due to that air column therefore we can say pressure difference will be pressure at the bottom minus pressure at the top which will be equal to 
pressure due to the air column. And we know that the air column now will be having the height of the mountain. Therefore, it will be the height of the mountain times, we know that the density of air is 1.25 and the G is always 10. On the earth surface, gravitational acceleration is, appro is, is approximated to be 10. Therefore, now we get to subtract this, you get 1, 0, 2, minus 81, 600. This will give us 20,400. Is equals to height times 1.25 times 10. Therefore, to remain with h, you divide it through by 12.5. This will give us 1,632 meters. Therefore, the height of that mountain is equal to the height of the air column between the bottom of the mountain and the top of the mountain. That's why we have gotten, first of all, the pressure difference between the bottom and the top. So that is it. I would like us to see another one example before we go to the measurements of pressure. One further example. And the example says this. Example says, the diagram below shows a mercury manometer. Then we are told a dry gas. This is example three. Yeah? A dry gas is present in the closed space. In the closed space in limp air. In limp air. Then we are also told that limp B is open. Limp B is open. Then we are told if the atmospheric pressure is a hundred thousand newtons per meter squared and we are told that H is equals to 20 millimeters and the density of mercury is 13,600 kilograms per meter cubed Determine the pressure of the gas. Determine the pressure of the gas. Determine the pressure of the gas. Therefore, the, the diagram is here. We also told to take G as 10 newtons per every kilogram. This is the diagram. This is a symbol manometer, a mercury manometer, which is used to measure pressure. Therefore, we are told that in this we have mercury up to part B. This is mercury. Then we have this part being open, part B. Then we are told this is atmospheric pressure. But here we have a gas. In this space we have a gas. Then this is part A. Then from here to where the gas is, we are told this is H. And we have been told that H is 20 millimeters. Therefore, now we can proceed to determine the pressure of the gas inside limp air. Solution. <clears throat> Solution. We can see that 
point A and B are in the same horizontal distance or height. And because they are in the same height or level, then we can say that these are not we mentioned when we were starting the topic pressure. We say that pressure at the same level is equal. And now, with that note, with that note, we can say that if pressure at the same level is equal, then the pressure at A is equal to the pressure at part B. Pressure at A will be equal to the pressure at B. And therefore, we can examine now the different pressures now. Pressure at A is due to a mercury height above it and also a certain gas. Therefore, pressure at A is pressure due to a gas plus the pressure due to mercury which you are saying it will be equal to the pressure at B and the pressure at B is simply atmospheric pressure there is no other pressure pressure due to the atmosphere there is no other pressure acting it for part B therefore part A we have two matters which are exerting pressure at point A at point A we have a height of column of mercury which is above it and a certain gas which is fixed in that limb. Therefore, we can say pressure of the gas is unknown. Pressure of the gas is unknown. But pressure of the mercury can be gotten by the formula H rho G. And the height is 20 millimeters. Therefore, we divide by 1,000 to get it in meters. To change the millimeters to meters, we divide by 1,000 times the density of mercury, 13,600 times 10, which is G. This will be equal to atmospheric pressure, which is 100,000. Therefore, pressure due to the gas will be, we multiply 20 times 13,600, and these zeros can cancel. Actually, the three zeros can cancel like that, so it will be 20 by 1.6. And this gives us 2720 equals to 100,000. Therefore, pressure due to the gas <coughs> will be pressure due to the gas will be given by 100,000 minus 2720. And this gives us 97,280. Newtons per meter squared per meter squared. So that is how the question will be solved. With that now, I would like us to check something on the measurement of atmospheric pressure. Measurement of atmospheric pressure. measurements of atmospheric pressure or measurement of pressure generally so here <coughs> it is good to note that it is good to notice that air pressure or atmospheric pressure is measured using symbol mercury barometers barometers or a manometer can also be used <clears throat> these are the setups are you discover that we just put mercury and we know the meniscus of mercury curves upwards mm. 
then you take a glass tube which is closed in one side and you fill it with mercury then you dip it in the mercury which is in the beaker therefore this mercury this is a glass tube glass tube. Therefore, we are saying this. <clears throat> when you take a glass tube and you fill it completely with mercury, this is mercury inside here, you fill it with mercury, then you dip it inside a beaker containing a beaker containing a mercury again. You discover that because there is an atmospheric pressure which is acting on the surface of the mercury, which is in the beaker, and the column of mercury which you have filled the glass tube with is also having some pressure. Then the mercury flows out from the glass tube until the pressure due to this height balances with the pressure due to the atmosphere. Therefore, as long as there will be pressure difference, now mercury is either going to flow from the beaker to the glass tube, or if in the gl glass tube is where we are having a higher pressure, then the column is going to reduce until the pressure due to this height balances with the pressure due to the atmosphere. And therefore we can say that the atmospheric pressure which is outside this setup or which is outside the glass tube is able to support a certain height of the mercury inside the glass tube. Therefore we say that the column which remains in the glass tube after the experiment has been supported by the atmospheric pressure outside. And with this we can say that atmospheric pressure is equal to pressure of the mercury supported. Therefore, at the end of the experiment, you will discover that the atmospheric pressure can support a certain height of mercury inside the glass tube. And therefore we say atmospheric pressure can be given by the, the height of the mercury times the density of mercury times the gravitational acceleration. Therefore, now after doing the experiment, we can now take the height of mercury which has been supported and we multiply by the density of the mercury times the gravitational acceleration and that will give us the pressure of the height which is supported here and we are equating it with the atmospheric pressure. Therefore, it is good to note this. It is good to notice the following. That the atmospheric pressure supports a maximum height, a maximum height of mercury, which is 760 millimeters and up to 10 meters of water. Therefore, if we do this experiment with water, then a height which is even up to 10 meters upwards of water can be supported or can be balanced by atmospheric pressure. But for mercury, it is only 760 millimeters. This difference is simply because mercury is very dense and therefore a very small height of mercury will balance the atmospheric pressure or 
will cause a pressure which can be balancing the atmospheric pressure. Unlike water, which has a small density and will require even 10 meters height so that water can balance the atmospheric pressure. Therefore, when we use these theoretical values, we can say that <clears throat> atmospheric pressure due to water, atmospheric pressure due to water, due to water will be due to water because we are saying it can support up to 10 meters of water. If we use a barometer filled with water and we say a, a height of up to 10 meters will be supported. Then we can say now the atmospheric pressure which has been balanced is equal to the pressure due to that water column which is 10 by 1000 which is the density of water times 10. And this is giving us around 100,000 newtons per meter squared. But when we say pressure due to mercury, pressure due to mercury will be 760 because they are millimeters we can divide by a thousand to make them SI units times 313600 which is the density of mercury times G which is 10 this gives a pressure which is around 760 times 136 because these three zeros can cancel with those and this is giving us 103,360 newtons per meter squared. Therefore, <clears throat> that's why you find, because some of the experiments might suffer some errors, that is why we say that in most cases, the atmospheric pressure can be approximated to 100,000 newtons per meter squared because when you check the two values they are not very much different from one another therefore atmospheric pressure can be measured using symbol barometers so actually we can say this if we have seen that due to the height of water or mercury, the height which can be supported is 760. Then it means a height which is above 750 cannot be supported by atmospheric pressure and that's why mercury will flow into the beaker. And if this height has not reached 760, it means that again mercury will flow up the tube until they balance. Now, for the case of water, we are saying that water can be supported if, even up to a height of 10 meters. And because a height of up to 10 meters can be supported, it means that if the height of water exceeds 10 meters, then it will not be supported by atmospheric pressure and that volume of water or that column of water will flow down until it reaches around 10 meters which is the maximum height of water that can be supported by atmospheric pressure. It is good to note that that idea or that concept is the one which is applied so that it is made sure that whenever someone is making or digging a well, he should or she should ensure that the well does not go beyond a depth of 10 meters because beyond 10 meters then that column of water cannot be pumped up and that's why all the wells are made strictly to either 10 meters or a height which is below that because a height beyond 10 meters of water cannot be supported by the atmospheric pressure and it means if a well goes deeper than 10 meters then the water will be impossible to be pumped out of the well so that's all about atmospheric
pressure. In the next lesson, I'm inviting you for the applications of pressure. Thank you very much. Make sure you subscribe. We are going to meet next. Thank you.